being a uh, kind of a special day, uh, I've asked for permission to do something for my mother. And uh, it relates to this here drum that was carried by Peter Gibbert of the 74th Pennsylvania, uh, who was here at Gettysburg in 1863. He was with Company F, 74th Pennsylvania. They were, of course, engaged in the first day's battle uh, up on the north end of town. Uh, Peter, at that time, was also assigned to the brigade <laughs> band. And uh, I'd like to do something that uh, was part of the drummer's duty uh, there. And uh, there were three components to the work of the drummers. One component was on the field of battle, relaying signals, as was done by the bugle. Uh, another component was in camp uh, with what the, the, the so-called camp duty. And a, th a third was the entertainment, with, primarily with the fifes and or bugles uh, in the march and in ceremonial work, funeral duties, things like that. Many of these signals had, of the camp duty had dual purposes. And my mother, being uh, an interesting character, uh, also belonged to the Daughters of the American Revolution. And she'd have me as a youngster come and play uh, for her gatherings of the uh, Daughters of the American Revolution. And one of the things that she always asked me to do was a piece called the fatigue call. The fatigue call is a signal to clean up the camp. And like, like the church call, uh, it had a dual purpose. The church call's dual purpose was a signal of one commander wishing to have a parley or a discussion with another commander. There's a famous painting in the uh, DAR Museum of a British drummer boy standing on the ramparts or the breastworks at Yorktown, a uh, young, young boy uh, playing the church call, the parley. The fatigue call had a dual purpose, and in the, uh, she, she always wanted me to tell this story, and she delighted in it, that the dual purpose in one book, the Bruce and Emmett book, called for its use to drum disorderly women out of camp. Uh, the, the Howe book, the Elias Howe drum book of the same period, said it was used to fight women out of camp, and it goes like this. about the drummer, and then I'm going to bring everybody up to speed. Tell us about him. Uh, Peter Gibbert was born in Alsace, Lorraine, France, uh, on the border with Germany in 1844 in Stop. January. What, when were you born? Uh, February 1944. Okay. 100 years apart. Continue on. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, Peter, Peter, early images of Peter show him without a mustache. I grew my mustache in Vietnam when I was in the Navy. Uh, Post-war uh, images of Peter show him with the mustache. Uh, approximately the same stature. Uh, and in, oh, in 1913... Well, I was going to get to that. I'm going to work this up. In 1913, of course, they had the 50th anniversary of the Battle of Gettysburg. And Peter was determined that he was going to make it here and deciding he's not going to take a train. Oh, no, uh-uh, no. He's going to walk. And with his drum, with that drum? With this drum. With that drum. He's going to walk from Pittsburgh. Is that right? Pittsburgh to Gettysburg. Pittsburgh north, north side of Pittsburgh. The north side of Pittsburgh, all the way to Gettysburg. And it took him how long? 19 days. 19 days to do that. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty good hike. So, yet yeah, how old was he? Uh, the newspaper said he was 70. 70. How old are you? Uh, I'd be 70 by the same right. All right, 770. So, 
can you imagine somebody doing the same walk at the age of 70? Well, Jim Smith just finished that walk, uh, what, a couple weeks ago? A couple weeks ago. Walked from Pittsburgh all the way to Gettysburg. How long did it take you? 19 days. 19 days. Oh, yeah. I, I, I got to tell you, we were so proud of, of that accomplishment. Uh, some people, you know, when they when they're observing the anniversary of something like this, they'll just, you know, use it in passing, have a little picnic or something. You did it hardcore, and we're all, 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 all proud of you. In fact, you need to give him the proper three cheers, boys. Hip hip hurrah! Hip hip hurrah! Hip hip hurrah! by President Lincoln to heal the country, to heal the wounds uh, with malice toward none and with charity for all. That was the fundamental purpose of the reunion. And uh, uh, the idea of the reconciliation at the wall was proposed and executed by the veterans themselves. And one of the things that we did find in the National Archives was a photograph showing uh, Union and Confederate musicians under two flags, a Confederate flag and uh, a Union flag, and there was Peter Gibbert in the middle. So uh, this is very appropriate that we should be doing this music here today, and I thank you very much. It's an honor. I just have one question. I just want, want to know if he's walking back. Yeah. <laughs> Starting right now. <laughs> well, we're coming up to the end of our, our concert here today. We've got two more numbers to play. Um, actually, we should play three. Uh, 